All aboard! All aboard! Ah, well, hello there. So, you're getting on this train, huh? You know, I've been conducting this train for a good couple of years now. Been through a lot with her. I remember the I got nothing up my butt incident back in 2019. There was also the Florida man who threw a Bible at a police officer. Oh, and don't get me started about the year 2020. Oh, boy. <laughs> so listen, if you're new here, I gotta read this, uh, this piece of paper for you. It's sort of a, sort of a legal thing, you know? Ah, here we go. <clears throat> Warning. The following show may feature some adult language and adult scenarios that are not suitable for those under the age of 18 to 21 years old. If you are under this age, please consult your parents and or legal guardians for permission to listen to this show. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Well, with that out of the way, will you still be getting on? <laughs> Excellent! Well, let me just punch your ticket for you. And welcome to Trademark's Trainwreck. Good evening, passengers, and welcome to the first episode of Trademark's Trainwreck in the year 2021. In the future! Da -da. Shit, it's already, the, it's already the new, it's already the next year? God damn, that hangover was bad. <sighs> but did you lose a tooth and end up with a tiger? No. Oh, God. Good. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, since this is going to be the first episode of this show up on YouTube, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Trademark. I am, of course, the uh, the host of this uh, dumpster fire of a, uh, I guess this is technically a podcast? And uh, with me here tonight yes. are uh, just two of the uh, many co-hosts who participate with me on this show. We have with us uh, Random Greymane, our technical wizard. Huh? What? Oh, um, excuse me while I push this broken printer under the desk. <laughs> Fantastic. And, of course, we have Sherlock, the man who knows the ins and outs of law to the nth degree. Uh, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I work in the courthouse, yeah. and I know a lot about that kind of stuff. Yeah, let's make that disclaimer. He is not a lawyer. So, However, Gray does sound exactly like um, an IT person. Whenever I have to, whenever I go into the IT guy's office, and I'm like, "Hey, I need your help, huh? What?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is the guy that we all talk to, alongside uh, DJ uh, Qcom slash Squirrel. Which brings me to uh, our, uh, my little description for this uh, show. Trademarks Trainwreck here is a show that is brought to you by Celestia Radio. This uh, show airs on uh, every Wednesday night at. 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, depending on whether or not Daylight Savings is in effect. Uh, and we are a podcast that takes a look at all the uh, dumb internet news and just points and laughs at it. Not an original concept, but hey, I wanted to do it, and Squirrel was just like, hey, sure. <laughs> and so here we are. Yes, we go where everyone's been before. Yes. 
So, boys. Difference being, I find I kind of think that we're a bit more entertaining. Eh, we'll see about that. <laughs> I, I think we're weirder. We yeah, might not be more entertaining, but we're, we're definitely weirder. We're definitely weirder. Like, we go off the rails. Though we do have some uh, standards that we uh, we try to uphold on this show. Uh, first and foremost, since this is a, a fun show, we like to... We tend to veer away from certain topics, so uh, don't worry. We won't be talking about any politics or child abuse or murder or any of those squicky things. We try to focus on... Unless... Unless... There's one exception to the politics rule. Is if something is done that is incredibly stupid or hilarious. Yes, that is... And the person just happens to be a politician. That is the one exception. But yeah, however, the exception to that it. exception is the big orange, the big orange tangerine is the orange Julius Caesar is not part of this discussion. Mm hmm. In any All case. exceptions must need to be approved by management. Yes. <laughs> so we tend to veer away from uh, those uh, polarizing uh, or just squicky topics. And we just we like to have a little fun. This is a show that's meant for uh, people to unwind and laugh along with just, you know, a. A chill out show with some comedy and just overall insanity. Uh, our format. And a lot of cringe. And a lot of cringe, yes. <laughs> our format is as follows. Uh, after this obligatory spiel and some shooting the wind and sh swapping some stories, we take a uh, quick little uh, behind the scenes break for uh, all of you in the uh, audience. It'll take like. Mm, 10 20 seconds most because i'm gonna have a musical interlude maybe some trailers for other shows on celestia radio uh then we're gonna go into the softcore material which is all the uh the low level crimes crimes that are not necessarily uh not necessarily heavy per se then we go into our final musical interlude for the night and move on to the hardcore material all the stuff that is um Worthy of a little bit more scrutiny, shall we say. So I'll start us off with the uh, shooting the wind segment here. Uh, I took a little peek into a website called uh, Chew Boom, which is where I get all my dumb food news. And, uh... Hmm. Hmm. There's a reason to get food news? Well, sometimes there's some food news that's pretty stupid. Like, you remember that time where we talked about uh, fucking Cheetos and sushi? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. now we got, uh, I'm not sure how weird this is, so I'm probably going to make myself look like an ass, pointing and laughing at this. But, um, at the, uh, as of December 17th of last year, 2020, Pepsi made an announcement about, uh, something. Pepsi reveals new Coca Cola. Or, sorry, Coco Cola. Chocolate Cola? Yeah. Producing Yoohoo's? Because there's already a chocolate cola out there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's not really new. It's not really new. Uh, let me take a look at this spiel. I just found it uh, very odd because I've never heard of this concept before. Uh, let's see. Pepsi Coca Cola. <laughs> I love that. They're fucking taking a crack at that. <laughs> it features. Oh, yeah. That's, that's taking the piss out of Coca Cola. Oh, yeah. Yes. It yes, features it a uh, blend of cocoa with a hint of marshmallow mixed with Pepsi Cola. That sounds awful. Yes, it, it, does. it does. And now you understand really why does. I put it here. <laughs> Pepsi, go back to trying to give away Harrier Jets you don't own. Yeah. What's sweeter I than saying bye to the worst year ever? Pepsi Coca Cola, the latest concept from the Pepsi Test Kitchen. Uh. You know, Jones Cola already does this kind of crazy, weird-ass shit. We don't really need Pepsi to do anything else. No. Correct. You know, you know what I want? Well, it, I want Coca-Cola uh, Coca to put to bring back vanilla Coke in the general retail. Yes, that would be nice. Vanilla Coke was not bad. Yeah, I know. Uh, I have vanilla Coke all over the place in my side of the country. I don't know about you it, guys. It's not it's anywhere here, in the Walmarts it, and the Targets. You can't find it. Yeah. It's um, it's here, but it's in like smaller quantities. You know, it's like you can't. You can buy like a six pack of it, and if you're lucky, you can buy like a twelve pack of it. Yeah. Um, 
but you can't buy like a case of it if you wanted to. Really That's nice. weird. I guess the West just is better in every single way. Ooh. I mean, we we don't Ooh. have Florida. Yeah. Oh, ow. Mm. Ow. <laughs> that was an ow. All right, funny man. Meanwhile, meanwhile, meanwhile Pepsi, if you're going to do something, go back and try and buy another Navy. Okay. Uh, although that was actually a myth. But uh, they did try to give away a Harrier, and they were an idiot, and they, they had to back down. Yeah, I so. remember that. I have vague memories of that. Yeah, didn't didn't the uh, didn't the U.S. Armed Forces be like, uh, hang on, guys? No, I, that was a British thing. They they couldn't buy one from the Brits um, because <laughs> at that point, Harriers were still in active use in the British military. Um, but yeah, they couldn't they couldn't get it, and then somebody in the marketing thing went, "Why did we agree to this again?" You know and. They just they, they scotched the whole thing. They didn't think anyone Somebody would get the took fucking court code. They, they almost won in court, <laughs> so they almost had to provide the equivalent money for a you know a Harrier Harrier time. jet, which is a lot. It's like that time <laughs> that uh, yeah. it's like that time that Taco Bell set up a thing where if, like a bit of satellite re-entering Earth's atmosphere landed in a fucking target zone, some promotional thing would happen. I don't remember. Oh, that was um, that was a long time ago. That was uh, yeah, it was because like I remember there was the announcement that this particular satellite was going to re-enter orbit and to be aware about you know incoming debris, and Taco Bell did this weird ass promotional thing about like getting um getting a if like you can bring in a piece of this scrap you get like a year's worth of tacos or some shit like that I can't remember. Uh, let's see. Well, according to this article I just found, uh, the tar- mirror. It was it was mirror. Um, it was a, the space station mirror. If um, if mirror hits a, uh, a floating Taco Bell ocean target, Taco Bell sets forty by forty target in the South Pacific for mirror reentry. This was two thousand and one. Yes, and it said uh, free tacos here. <clears throat> Correct. They quickly rolled out a, a consolation offer of two tacos for ninety nine cents when the thing missed. <laughs> Oops. Man, there have been so many crazy stuff. I mean, hell, recently we just had the fucking Szechuan sauce debacle with uh, McDonald's. Oh, don't remind me of that. Mm. You know, talk about talk about space debris, too. There was, uh, there was this whole thing with, like, a betting pool and everything about Skylab in the 70s. Okay, in the, the late 70s, early 80s, when Skylab was, was falling out of the sky because they couldn't correct the orbit on it. And um, there was a there was a literal betting pool as to where it was going to land because they honestly didn't know <laughs> they weren't sure they couldn't they couldn't it was too ungainly to properly calculate so they couldn't tell where it was going to come down but uh, yeah there was a betting pool for it <laughs> not surprising well uh, funny well, man Sherlock speaking of yeah speaking of um. Uh, food franchises and their insanity. So, um, I can't remember if it was okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was uh, McDonald's is trying to compete with Chick Fil A by adding like three new types of chicken sandwiches to their menu. And I'm like, best of luck, guys. Hmm. I mean, I said, what is it? It's like, I mean. <laughs> Okay, you guys can say what you want about McDonald's, but I'm, I haven't been a fan in a very long time. I haven't gone to a McDonald's for food in probably 15 years because I'm just done with their food. Like, the only thing I would ever go back there for would be their fries. But I'm like, so what's Chick-fil-A supposed to do to try and compete with McDonald's? Put an ice cream machine in their store that doesn't work? <laughs> well, depends if you listen to the employees or not. The ice cream machine in McDonald's is like the least cleaned thing so that shake you're getting from mcdonald's probably not the best thing in the world it is yeah it's probably filled with mold yeah well on that pleasant note i believe it is time for our first oh i do have i do have one other thing one other food food based bit of news and 
news for you guys. So apparently today was whip cr- National Whipped Cream Day. Okay. Oh, man. I'm going to have to use some yeah. whipped cream for the middle of the night then. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that's really funny because I always thought whipped cream came on a Sunday. Uh... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and with Shirley supplying our pun for the week, this episode of Trademark Stream. I am the dad here. I should be providing the dad jokes. This episode uh, of Trademark Sometimes she can do even better dad jokes than me. Ugh. Yeah, this is true. This episode of Trademark Stream Wreck has been fucking christened like the Titanic, and now we are off <laughs> into the ocean in more ways than one. But before we truly get started, it is time for our musical interlude. My co-host and I will take a, a quick break, and we'll be right back. Here on Trademarks Trainwreck, a show on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time, except when it's uh, whipped cream and tacos. And that's why you should never try and lick a bowling ball. <laughs> Well, thank you for that wonderful story, Gray Maine. Welcome back, passengers, to Trademarks Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom, all the time. Uh, we have a uh, another co-host with us tonight. We have the fangirl. I'm sorry I was late. I was maliciously complying with my uh, boss's request to buy more black pants and some dress-appropriate shoes, because apparently snow boots in the Midwest not work appropriate. For those not aware, the fangirl here is a... Uh... You know, I, I have a problem with this statement because I live in the Midwest, in a cold area, and from from November to January, boots are just a thing. <laughs> you, you see them in stores all the time. People walk around, the salespeople have boots on. It's so, okay. Yeah. I bought... I, it's okay, though. I bought Dr. Scholl's Trendsick nice. careers. It's literally in the name. If he complains about it tomorrow, when I do my half day, I can take off the shoe and say, that's not what the shoe says. So, la- <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, for those not in the know, the fangirl here, as her name implies, she's in tune with all sorts of uh, random fandom knowledge. She also uh, has written some uh, fan fictions in the past that have uh, become audio stories. I have done fan fiction. I have done fan art. Yes. I will fangasm if something really excites me. I am the fangirl. She also has... try and stop that from happening on air. She also has they a. Uh, she also... I don't always succeed. She also has a Patreon and a Redbubble. Go check it out. Anywho, uh, let us start this show off proper with the first softcore article of 2021. Which ironically reflects on the last call of a Florida fire department of 2020. Oh, it was. We're starting in Florida? Oh my god. Hey, we're starting the show off Florida. fucking right. And guess what? Guess what? It's my county again. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> so brief, you, you want to take. You... Brief apology for the brief apology for the cat meowing in the background. That is my cat. She is noisy. It's Let's fine. move on. So, so you want to take a you... train wreck? Trademark here on trademark train wreck. Trademark does not just find the news article; he makes the news article. In his own <laughs> no, article. no, no, no. I'm never involved personally in these articles. But uh, you guys want to take a crack at what the last He's call of a Florida fire department was for the year 2020? I mean, it, could be, it, it could be anything from a, a hooker. The hooker I paid, I paid, <laughs> stole my stole my heroin. Or a man running down um, a major highway in nothing but a in nothing but a speedo carrying a baby alligator around his neck. No, uh, they, they, oh no, no, no! They want them to buy more egg rolls. No, guys, guys, you think you're thinking a little too out there, and I see that reference there, Gray. No, no, but... no, 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 no! It's it's somebody caused a fire in a kitchen while wearing Mickey Mouse ears. 
You were you had it when you said fire. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it was an actual dumpster fire. Dumpster fire. Oh god, why? I wonder if the person who said it was being topical. <laughs> but of course. This is a short and sweet article that hails from Brevard County, Florida. Oh, man. A crew of firefighters there were counting down the fire the final hours of 2020 on New Year's Eve when they received a call in the community of Vieira. When they arrived at the scene, they found a dumpster engulfed in flames, a fitting year to 2020. They quickly extinguished the fire and then posed for a photo before heading back to the firehouse, which I believe I'll put in the uh, YouTube version of this episode. <laughs> They're just sitting so, there like, like, hey, what are you going to do? Yeah, so like, is like, that um? Did they get the is marshmallows? That, uh, <laughs> is that Florida redneck fireworks? I yeah. again, did they mm -hmm. did they get the marshmallows out? Did they toast? Here's their Twitter post: <laughs> the last fire of the year before uh, BCFR and Station Forty Eight kind of sums up 2020. Wishing for a better and prosperous 2021 for Brevard County. Hashtag dumpster fire. Missing the P there. Hashtag BCRF or BCFR. la di da da Nobody was injured as a result of the dumpster fire, and officials did not say what caused the blaze. It's just a mystery dumpster fire. Again, again it's it, again it's Florida, uh, so I'm assuming. Again, yeah, I was, I was gonna I'm say assuming. I'm assuming it. it's Florida. It's Florida redneck um, fireworks. Maybe Florida redneck fireworks. Someone being tropical. Someone being a fucking snark ass. Mm-hmm. Oh man, just fan fucking tastic. Again, Florida, somebody, Florida man, somebody over Florida man. Florida man. Somebody overheated their crack pipe and threw it away. That's yeah. that's about what it is. Maybe. When we move on to the last case of uh, 2020, to a uh, a contender for a mugshot, the best mugshot of 2021. And look at there. It's another so Florida we, man. So well, okay, the best mugshot of 2021. It's the year just started. That that's a big thing to assume. Well, um let me just let me just let me let me just share you. Let me just share this with you. Again on the YouTube episode, I'm going to share this too. Just take take a look at this and tell me what you see. Just tell me what you see. I saw a man who got drunk with his friends and passed out. Yeah. I see a People man who got drunk, out. and someone, and the the I see the victim of a sharpie marker incident. Mm. I, I'm just wondering where they drew the dick. <laughs> yeah, I was like, his <laughs> oh, like I'm honestly like this. This is just like a guy passed out drunk at a party with his friends, but his friends are idiots because they didn't draw a penis on his face. Again, for the future trademark, <laughs> get that. For those, for those uh, exclusively listening to our Celestia Radio broadcast. We're looking at a man who has a uh, stereotypical curly mustache drawn in his face. A bad short handlebar is what it is. Mm hmm. It's a badly drawn short handlebar. This is Tyler Jonathan. Also, I, also I, blame, I blame Jigglypuff. <clears throat> this is Tyler Jonathan Cribbs, the 28 year old Florida. <laughs> if I can just use fucking English. This is the. Uh, you're from there. You don't know how to say Floridian. I know how to say Floridian. It's just that my mouth sometimes <laughs> fucks up. Okay. Oh, we're off to a fantastic start. This is the 28-year-old Floridian who was charged on uh, January 4th while robbing an acquaintance of his wallet and phone, according to a probable cause affidavit. Police. Dude, you don't do that to your pal. That's not your friend. Unless it was the unless it was the pal that like drew the. Drew the shit on your face. Mm. Yeah, then I can understand why he did it. Police allege mm. that uh, Cribs accosted the victim last month as the man exited residence in uh, Astor, a community 40 miles west of Daytona Beach. The 37-year-old victim told cops that Cribs reached into his pants pocket and stole his belongings. The victim said that Cribs subsequently th threatened to burn his house down and, quote, told him that every time he sees him, he is going to take everything he's got, end quote. The victim, who said he has known Cribs his whole life, added he has, quote, 
been robbed by the defendant previously as well, end quote. Along with... All right, after the first two times, it might be a good idea to reassess your friends, dude. That's not your friend. Yeah. After a... Friend doesn't include robbed by. That, That just breaks the definition. Yeah. Along with a felony robbery count, Cribs was also uh, charged with uh, theft uh, misdemeanor. Upon being located by cops Sunday, Cribs allegedly resisted officers and was found in possession of uh, meth, leading to the uh, filing of additional charges against the five foot seven, two hundred thirty pound Daytona native. Locked up. Oh, on... what a shock! Yeah. Okay. Mm. You know, uh, first of all, he can't be a meth head that long. Okay. One, his hair short. Okay. <laughs> two, you know, two, his, his eyes aren't quite sunken in far enough. Okay. I don't know about his teeth because he doesn't have his mouth open in this picture. So, mm. but the hair alone tells me he hasn't done meth for any decent length of time. Let's see. He is uh, locked up on $8,500 bond. Cribs is scheduled for a February 1st arraignment. He has been ordered by a judge to have no contact with the victim, of course. Cribs, whose rap sheet includes convictions of possession of drug paraphernalia, resisting and driving without a license, has the word, has the words, king size, or sorry, king and size, tattooed on his knuckles in the style of the Knight of the Hunter. Whatever the hell that means. He also Uh, has... Okay. He also has perfect inked on one arm and imperfection on the other. (laughs) This guy's all over the place. And here wow. and here's the here's the answer to the question that everyone's waiting for. As for the snidely whiplash mustache seen in Cribs' latest booking photo, it appears to be the uh, kind of ephemeral Sharpie artwork that is usually created when the human canvas is passed out on a couch. What a shocker. <laughs> Someone had fun writing that last bit. Mm-hmm. And, but again, like, his friends fail because there's no dick on his cheek. Well, that depends yeah, on which that's cheek. A, that's a singular failure. <laughs> hey, you know what? It might be somewhere else. They might have shaved it in the back of his head. Mm-hmm. That would have been actually even better. Like, if that was the case, then I'd give them props. I'm, I would applaud them. Yeah. Oh, man. Just, that's not your friend. What What bothers me is King and Size tattooed on his knuckles. King size. That's typically That's ended like with a D. Bars. Yeah? He must Jesus. like king size ba- candy bars. <laughs> Dude's really got it going on for them big greasies. And perfect and imperfection. What the fuck? <laughs> this guy. Yeah, again, I, he's I think all over the map imperfect. here. I think he could have imperfection on both arms, actually. So. Oh, God. All right. Moving on. Moving back in time a little bit. Back to Christmas. Back to Christmas. Christmas. Uh, I, Christmas. I, I'm gonna re- I love stories like this next article here. Because of the... Well, I'll just tell you. Police wanted... Uh, yeah. Police arrest wanted criminals after luring them in fake Christmas hamper offer. I think I heard about this. Oh yeah, mm, okay. this is this is not a new thing, honestly, but it's still fantastic to hear about it. <clears throat> Instead of a bumper Christmas hamper arriving on their doorstep, the knock on the door meant a court appearance for twenty-one suspects. That is the uh, tagline for that article. Here's the actual article: Wanted criminals have been arrested after they were tricked into entering a Christmas hamper offered by police. Rule number one: If you're a criminal and the police are offering something. Don't listen to them. No, no, no. The police didn't say that they were the cops. They just said, they just put out this thing saying, oh, you have won this Christmas hamper. Yay. Also, we hear trademarks train wreck don't condone actually committing crimes. <laughs> yeah, no, please don't. Even, <clears throat> even, even if you quote go get away with it, the guilt will eat you up inside until you have an ulcer. Anywho. Officers from South Yorkshire uh, Police sent a card to a list of wanted people adv- advising them that they had been selected to receive a free hamper and they just needed to book a delivery slot. 
but when the knock on the door came, the recipients were instead arrested and delivered before, cor before the courts. They made uh, 21 arrests over two days. Detective Ch Chief Inspector Lee Barry, who oversaw the operation, said, Some of those arrested were wanted in relation to serious charges, including supplying an illegal article into prison, dangerous driving, drink driving, assault, and fraud. It's encouraging that our initiative... Uh, <clears throat> It's encouraging that our innovative approach has yielded positive results, and we will continue to explore new avenues for apprehending those wanted, which impacts upon the victims of crime. Sending officers to addresses where wanted people no longer reside is also a drain on valuable police resources. I gotta say, Trade, like, fine, fine enough voice, but you can tell by the way that the words were spoken that that was way too posh to be an American police chief. That was from England. Well, yes, it's, <laughs> so, it's South Yorkshire. So I'm just like, yeah. If I ever heard, like, a police chief or a sheriff or anyone speak with that level of enunciation, I'd be shocked. I'd be like, did you go to, like, grad school and then decide to become a cop? <laughs> also, for those... Fun fact, they don't let people do that. Um, the modern police force does not do that in a lot of smaller police areas. Uh, in fact, they weed out by IQ. Uh, there was big, there was big hoo haws about it for uh, a number of years, where they were they were preventing high IQ people from becoming part of the police force. Uh, I wonder why. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> let's so, not get into that, though. Let's not go into that. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> So for those, uh, before I continue the article, for those wondering what in the flying fuck a, a, a hamper is, apart from something you put your clothes in when you need to wash them, uh, according to uh, what I'm seeing here with uh, what is dubbed Operation Holly, a uh, hamper here is basically an assortment of uh, uh, all sorts of treats that you can get, including uh, Christmas pudding, uh, wine, what I assume to be uh, grapes and chocolates, just all sorts of uh, little little things that you uh, get during the holidays. Mostly edible things. Stuff that I assume is uh, very uh, rich to the taste, I assume. I, don't, I find that odd that the Brits just like, and here's the thing, like we have a, a DJ on, this, on the show, Zai, DJ Fluff, and he always just asks us, how can you guys not understand our English? It's There's a lot of logic to it. It's like, Zai, <laughs> this is one of those words where there's no logic to it. It's called a hamper. And they use, it, it, they use hamper as a way to describe a delivery of foodstuffs to people in England. However, hamper is also used in England as the thing you throw dirty clothes in. So what is it? It's a hamper. Your language is stupid. Everyone knows English is a stupid language. Yet we speak it's it anyway. Or prevent. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's <sighs> a noun and a verb. <laughs> Anywho, continuing with the article. The people arrested on the 18th and 19th of December had responded to the offer from fictional company Harold Hampers. Some were wanted in relation to burglaries, drink driving, drugs, offenses, and harassment. Yes, we already got that from the police quote, thank you. Many of the cases were concluded in a single day in court, including driving disqualifications, a recall to prison, a curfew, and fines being imposed. One individual was also remanded into police custody. Detective Chief Inspector Barry said, If you, if you commit a crime in South Yorkshire, we will come for you at any time. Any place and, and in any guise to ensure we bring offenders to justice and keep our community safe, he said in a terrible British accent. All right, Chief Murphy. <laughs> oh, lordy. Lordy, lordy, lordy. Merry Christmas. Going to jail. Reminds me of, like, uh, a similar sting where police... Again, this is not a new thing. Police do this all the time. They lure people in by saying, You've won uh, a big prize. Just come down to the court. Just come down to this location. And the, the criminals are all come smiling and happy. Or to the... Yeah. You've won a big prize. Just come to the county courthouse. 
and they're all smiling and happy and the cops are the cops are there and they go yeah and the criminals like yeah and they zip tie and handcuff the criminals and the criminals are still happy like yeah what's going on i remember that happened i remember didn't we go talk about that happening here in the states where a cop and his where a sheriff and his deputies were dressed up as santa and elves yeah, that was uh, yeah, our really last show of though. 2020. Yeah, that's oh, when they were. That's when I they were like catching people trying to rob, trying to steal cars or break into cars. That's right. They were. They they ran. Uh, Santa and his elves ran out to the parking lot to stop people from breaking into stuff and stealing presents. Yep. Well, <sighs> well uh, I guess this was another person who made it on the naughty list. Very much. This is also this is also along the level of. Hey, officer, somebody stole my weed. <laughs> somebody stole my cocaine. Can you help me no. find my cocaine? No. What? My house is burning down. Why? Because my meth lab exploded. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's another one. No, seriously, like, uh, this, this, these kind of stings happen, and they're hilarious to me. I always love them. They're funny. Yeah. And as you long know, as they're done appropriately. And you know, Fanny, you just said meth lab. Which is a facility oh that's fa- those are facilities that are found in stranger the strangest places. But uh, the facility I've got here is not meth, and it's not in someone's home. Instead, we have an illegal winery which was found in a sewer plant in Alabama. So someone did a spill in a sewer in a sewage building. Yeah. Or less. Uh, you know, it, not surprising at all. You know, and and from a standpoint of of doing a steal, if it's in a sewer building, nobody's going to check. Yeah, no one's well, going to check. Well, clearly they you did know, just you know, now. The yeah, the, well, clearly. So the eventually with, they're going to look. Yeah. Well, the problem with having a steal in a sewer building, okay, is keeping it clean, okay? Because if you're going to have a steal, you got to keep it clean. It's like brewing. Okay, you got to keep everything spotless. So how are you going to have that in a sewer building? I don't know, but okay. Well, let me tell you the story. Well, I, they don't have to keep everything spotless. I mean, there's a reason the illegal stills are illegal. So Correct. Okay, I'll, I'll buy that. So this happened around uh, December 18th of last year, 2020. Sheriff's officials say they've busted an illegal winery that was operating at a municipal sewage plant in a small Alabama town. The DeKalb County Sheriff's Office said in a statement that it received an anonymous tip about an alcohol operation at a municipal building in the town of Rainsville on Thursday, uh, the week of December 18th. Investigate. Oh man, using your own, using a, using an active municipality for your illegal operations, that is not, that does not look good to the city. Well, there you go. (laughs) <laughs> Investigators then uncovered what's described as a large illegal winery inside the Rainsville wastewater treatment plant. Photos released by investigators, which I will show in the YouTube version, show glass containers, buckets, and fer- a fermenting rack and other equipment used by people who make wine at home. Now, it's not it's not illegal to make limited amounts of wine at home in Alabama. But it is illegal to have more than 15 gallons of the stuff at a time. <laughs> Correct, because then you are doing production. Yeah, producing and... producing wine to resale. And they had more than 100 gallons of white and red wine. <laughs> so... What's really weird, though, is getting a winer's license isn't that hard. <laughs> no, it really isn't. The same with getting a brewer's license. You have to have certain equipment. You have to have things clean. You know, you, you have to pay. Start. You have to pay a certain level of taxes, but it's not like getting a distiller's license. That's imp- that's near impossible. You know, and, so and it's, it's like so funny because because if you look back, they even talked about it properly on fucking TV for comedy's sake. Drew Carey, okay, that brewery in his in his in his garage, okay, where he made the beer during that show, so to speak, and they talked about the the crap he has to go through. Okay, but it wasn't that bad. It was crap anybody could do. So, you know, why do something like this? Mm. It's just dumb. I also have uh, 
an identity for the person behind this. So this was uh, the work of 62-year-old Alan Maurice Stifel, a 15-year employee of the Rainsville Wastewater Treatment Plant. He was arrested Not and hit... Anymore. No! He was arrested and hit with a misdemeanor related to possessing an illegally manufactured alcoholic beverage, as well as a felony charge of use of official position for personal gain. That's, that's, okay, this is either one of two things, in my opinion. This is either a guy that got screwed over, okay, by his employers, okay, and said, fuck it, I'm going to use the city's resources as my own, or somebody in his immediate management said, oh, um, I, you know, you can do that. Yeah, go ahead and use that, that area. We're not using it right now. Just don't tell anybody. And hmm. somebody from upper management walked in. Okay. That's my take on this. Okay. That, uh, you know, why he was making so much of it, that's a different story. Well, obviously it's selling. I've got another picture. Actually, I have uh -oh. a lot of pictures of all, all, all this going on. I'll probably show them all in the YouTube version. But for my co-host, here's a picture of at least the red wine department. Oh, good lord. Yeah, that looks perfectly legit. Yeah. Perfectly legit, all illegally made. Yep. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, it's, it's actually funny. I had a friend of mine in the reenactment community who made mead, and um, he he didn't have a brewer's license because you don't need one to make mead in any levels, no. in, in, in any amount. No, you it's, need an it's alcohol distributor's good. license if you want to sell it. Right, but, but it's, uh, not, it's not a controlled thing like anything, like like wine or, or beer. Um, which is funny because it is wine. <laughs> it is pretty much wine, yes. <laughs> but like he had, the, we had this tasting for him because he's like, all right, I've got these, I think it was like 15 to 20 um, samples that he had finished. Like, I need some people to taste them for me so we can see which ones to throw out and which ones like are the best and which ones are like the weakest. So we had a mead tasting party and I got myself tore up. <laughs> Cause like, even though like, yeah, we should have spit them out, spit out the samples we were having. None of us did. Nobody, nobody ever does that. Here's... And mead, good mead will fuck you up. Mm -hmm. Good mead will fuck you up before you can, can figure out that you're being fucked up. Here's the thing. On a side note, I don't, why didn't he just give this shit away, you know, if he was if he didn't want to be in trouble? He probably was uh, planning to. But my question is, how is he going to do it? Because you can't exactly say, I made this where we treat the water that's full of shit. You can't call it shit's, wa shit's wine. Even you if just you don't tell him. <laughs> yeah, you just don't tell him. Man, how'd you get all this? Uh... I made it. Where? Where? Don't worry about it. <laughs> now worry I'm worried it. about it. Don't worry about it. <sighs> no, seriously, you don't tell them. Hey, I made I made you some wine here. Hey, I made you some wine. Most people probably here. won't ask you where you got it if you if you just give them a free barrel of wine. Correct, and they I will guess. assume that you made it in your kitchen. They will assume that you made it in your kitchen or your bathtub or whatever. They they will assume that they made it. You made it in your house. I mean, as long they as will he... not assume you made it in a, in a sewage treatment plant. As long as he <laughs> distributes it out uh, one at a time, as opposed to everything at once, especially the big ass fucking jugs, he could well, have no, probably gotten away with it. Well, here, here's the thing: he literally could have loaded that into his car. As long as he didn't charge money for it, he literally could have loaded it in his car, driven to one friend's house. Here, have a jug. Driven to another friend's house. Here, have a jug. You know, driven and <laughs> and literally given it away, and then he would have been in the clear. Okay, because he would have been giving it away as gifts, not producing it for resale. And he would have been able to prove that because he wouldn't have gotten any money from these people. Mm. Okay. I and, I do I kind of do have a feeling that the more and more I hear about this, the more and more I'm like, this oh, guy yeah, seems was, like he was railroaded. Yeah. Maybe. So, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. <sighs> All right. One last article for the softcore material tonight. I put this in the softcore material because of <laughs> the fucking my <laughs> Oh god, I just realized the woman in this uh, last article looks like fucking Sypha from uh Netflix's Castlevania. <laughs> okay. L look okay. at look at this woman. It, it's the it's the shirt along with her hair. 
Yeah, it's the hair. I'll give her the hair. Yeah. Mm. Anywho. Uh, no, it's Christmas. Suspect protests as she's to re- resist cops' attempt to res- arrest her. Ah, well, the, I the, mean, ah, the Christmas spirit. It has the power to get you out of trouble. <laughs> Not really. It works no, in the it movies. Doesn't. Have you heard the legend of Krampus? <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck if it's Christmas or not. Mm. Oh, you know, I can't call Krampus. She won't take my. She won't let me take my Krampus. Take my kid. Can't do it. No, so I gotta do other things. Jesus. Okay, so when a Louisiana cop earlier, early on uh, December twenty fourth, twenty twenty informed this woman that she was under arrest for driving with a suspended license and a probation violation warrant. Motorist Renee Widen uh, Widen would have none of the patrolman's Scrooge-like attitude. No, it's Christmas, Widen said as she turned away from Deputy uh, Timothy Fisher and began to run from her vehicle, which was pulled over on the street in West Monroe around 4.35 a.m. Witten's getaway was brief, however. Uh, Witten made it uh, a very short distance before she ran into a parking lot sign and fell to the ground. Ow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this, this woman became a fucking Looney Tunes cartoon. You'll never take me a lap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> This woman's 34 years old, by the way. Uh, so after that um, display of brilliance, Widden was then handcuffed and transported to jail, where she was booked on several charges, including uh, meth possession and resisting an officer. Uh, uh, I, I, I can tell from the, from the cheeks. The cheeks are, are starting to hollow. Mm, yeah, a little bit. She does have kind of that uh, dead-eyed stare. And both messes will have, yeah. yeah. She's looking into my soul, and I don't like it. Mm. So yeah, Bond has not been uh, set for her, so unfortunately she did have to spend uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas behind bars. According to court records, Widden was also arrested in late October for possession of meth, cocaine, and suboxin. Suboxin? What the hell is suboxin? That's a new one. One. Quick Google search. I'm on it. <clears throat> uh, burr, 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 burr. Let's go to drugs.com. Suboxone. Oh, it's a narcotic. It's a, it's a uh, narcotic opiate addiction. There's. It's used yeah, to treat it's, that. It's an anti. Right. It's an anti addiction drug. Ironic the considering is, the situation. If it's an anti addiction drug. It mean that means it has a certain level of the narcotic in it. Correct. Yeah, to kind of to kind of take the edge off of your uh, your your problem there. Yeah, so no, that makes sense. My my question is why she would have that and not have like Narcan, um, because Narcan is literally free, pretty much. Well, I, well, obviously she Nar couldn't. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anywho. Alongside the uh, possession of meth, cocaine, and suboxone, she was also uh, charged with possession of drug paraphernalia and illegal possession of a firearm. Those charges are pending as of uh, December 24th, 2020. No update on the matter. Uh, I just love that. I just love, one, the fucking excuse of, No, it's Christmas! <laughs> It works in Hallmark movies, darling. Not in the real world. And then the fact that she ran into a fucking pole is just... You can't write that. You know what she looks like? She looks like um, when you start a game, okay, with a 3D (laughs) character, and you're in the character creator, and you're not paying attention. You're you're just fiddling around with the controls, and you look back, and you go, Oh, God! She's not that bad. No, no she's no, not. No, I she's not I've bad. seen worse on like uh uh just guys messing around with character creators and yes. just doing yeah. random yeah. stuff. Yeah. 
modulators. <laughs> the bone modulators or whatever it's called. The bone rigging. Bone rigging. That's what it is. There you go. Yep. Ah, oh, well, that's the end of our softcore material for tonight. It's time for us to take our second break. Brace yourselves, folks. We got the hardcore material coming up. We're going to ramp it up a level when we get back. In the meantime, you're listening to Trademarks Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time, except when, no, it's Christmas! <laughs> saying is if you twist the bread right you can make a good lock pick <laughs> all right then welcome back to trademarks train wreck featured on celestia radio all fandom all the time time to go a little bit a little bit further into the realm of crime and stupidity let's talk about one particular uh, drug suspect's half-baked cake claim half Baked cake. Claim. Yes. Okay. This happened on January 4th. I'm assuming this has something to do with... I'm assuming this has something to do with par- marijuana. Maybe. Bye. The first line. You just expect more from a genius. G-E-N-E-U-S. You'll see the significance of that in just a sec. After police found a scale and bags containing white and brown substances in his backpack, a Florida man claimed that he was carrying a, quote, bag of sugar and a bag of cornstarch to bake a cake, end quote, according to an arrest report. <laughs> sure. Well, that's that's a new one. Yeah, that's I some... I will fully well, admit, that, that is a new one on me. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats, sir. You have won the most uh, unique, interesting line. Yeah. This was, uh... <sighs> so, investigators say that ex-con Jethro Genius, and there it is, 30, was a passenger in a Honda that was pulled over by Port St. Lucie cops around 3 a.m. on New Year's Eve. Genius was removed from the car after officers determined that he was the suspect, uh, <clears throat> subject, rather, of an outstanding aw- arrest warrant. A subsequent search of a backpack that was at Genius's feet on the front floorboard revealed, quote, two large bags of a white and brown substance, end quote. Cops report. Genius! who reportedly claimed ownership of the backpack, said that the seized substances were actually ingredients for a cake to be baked. However, a field test revealed that both substances, which weighed a combined two-thirds of a pound, they contained ecstasy. In addition to a narcotics trafficking count, Genius was charged with introducing contraband into a detention facility, after he allegedly dropped a bag of meth while in custody at the county jail. He is currently locked... Oh, come on. Oh, that's that's an icing on the cake, little kid. That's... Ah. All right, look, okay, I'm not go- I'm not defending this guy in any way, shape, or form, but that is not his fault. That's bad. That's a bad search on the, uh, on the police's fault. I won't deny yeah. that. Uh, how could... It's like... How on earth, like, yeah, he should, maybe he should have told them about it, but they should have searched him better. That's bullshit. Also, gray fucking icing on the cake. Uh, I didn't mean it. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Well, regardless of the potentially bullshit uh, charge, Genius is currently locked up in lieu of a $47,500 bond. And here is his rap sheet. <clears throat> We've got convictions for burglary, marijuana possession, providing a false name to police, resisting, and possession of drug paraphernalia. He was released from state prison in March 2020 after serving about five years for burglarizing a Fort Pierce home. Cop discovered genius hiding under a bed in the residence while his accomplice 
was found in possession of a Dorothy Explorer bag, which was apparently intended to be used to carry purloined items. <laughs> well, I mean... Can you find the bag? <laughs> Can you find the TV? Can you find the criminal? <laughs> Swiper no swiping. Can you find the drugs? Swiper no swiping my meth. <laughs> Swiper no swiping or Dora gonna Aww. cut a bitch. Darn it. <laughs> oh, dear God. Mm. Little note for you. For you potential criminals which again we here at trademark train wreck do not condone actually committing crimes but uh in the chance in the high probability that you do get caught with substances just tell them what you got because they're not they're never gonna buy that oh this this isn't marijuana this is lettuce this isn't meth this is salt they're never gonna oregano. buy that shit. Oregano. It's oregano. It's oregano. It's, ore it's oregano. Yes. It's parsley. Uh, they're never gonna buy it's it. Parsley. Just tell them what you got, and maybe they'll go easy on you. And I say maybe because I don't know how this shit works, and I don't intend to find out. Oh God, oh my. Uh. Sugar and cornstarch. Are either of those brown? Like, I know there's brown sugar. But it's cornstarch. Corn yes. Oh, okay. Cornstarch can be brown, cornstarch can be white. Either one. Okay. I mean, he tried. He tried, but... Mm -mm. Uh, next. Next in the category of, oh, you fucking dumbass kids. This happened the, uh, the week of December 29th, 2020. Uh, I have uh, personally bared witness to kids doing dumb shit near roads, like doing that invisible rope shit. But at least, uh... at least with the invisible rope, unless they have actual fishing line, that, that shit is just annoying. If not cute, in a way. This here, not as cute. Four teens were arrested for allegedly throwing bricks at passing cars. Fucking hell. Oh, God. Those kids must have been bored. Yeah. We're running on an overpass, because we get that here in this state. They go on an overpass, they drop rocks. Mm-hmm. So, uh... I have no idea how how to pronounce this city. Sadly, Worcester. Worcester. Worcestershire. Worcester. I'll just call it W. W. Police first responded to a call of assault with a brick on Sunday afternoon. So say the uh, the police department. Officers found a man with uh, quote very serious injuries to his face. Jeez. The 37-year-old man said someone threw a brick at his vehicle, which struck his windshield and hit him in the face. The man was taken uh, to the hospital for his injuries. While investigating the initial case, police received more calls about passengers of a uh, red SUV chucking bricks at other cars in the area. Police discovered the SUV was stolen, and an officer spotted it on the road. The SUV sped up once police started following it and eventually stopped and two male occupants got out and fled on foot. Two female occupants stayed in the SUV. After a, br a brief pursuit, police arrested two boys, ages 15 and 16, and two girls, also ages 15 and 16, in connection with the brick tossing. In total, the teen struck 19 cars with bricks. All four were charged with this aggravated assault and battery with a brick. Five counts of uh, assault with a dangerous weapon, mayhem, conspiracy, 19 counts of malicious damage to a motor vehicle, and uh, throwing missiles at a train or bus and resisting arrest. 
and uh, just just for the heck of it, let's charge the uh, 16-year-old boy because he's carrying brass knuckles unlawfully. Those are actually illegal everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, kids, don't throw bricks at cars because, speaking from experience, um, I had a rock thrown at my car. Oh, I shit. stopped. I chased their ass down. And then I drug their ass back to their parents. Ooh. <laughs> it, was in, it was in my neighborhood. It was in my, the old neighborhood I lived in with my parents. I was driving in my car. All of a sudden, clunk on the hood of my car. I reached to a stop, looked, and the two kids just like kind of had this wide eyed, <laughs> you know, tore after him. He stopped, grabbed what are you them doing? both. And I was like, where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> that there's not an idle threat. You remember the good old days when you were bored as a kid and you just like, I don't know, you played a board game, you went outside and like played in the dirt with some sticks and you like, you just ran around the the fucking woods. Rather well, than... to be fair, tr to be fair trade, I mean, kids have been throwing bricks at people's car, rocks at people's cars since before Gray was a kid. I mean, fair, but still, I have, in my wild days of being a, a weird, dumb, stupid kid, I have never once in my life thought, hey, you know what would be fun? Throw rocks at passing cars, and then upgrade to fucking you know, bricks down the road. Here's, here's the thing, okay? Yes, rocks have been thrown at cars since cars have existed. Rocks were thrown at wagons, rocks were thrown... You know, at, at dinosaurs, I'm sure. Um, although dinosaurs and humans didn't live. Ne never mind. <laughs> the point is, there is a big difference, okay, between throwing a rock, which is usually a palm-sized object, okay, mm -hmm. to throwing a brick, which is beyond the size of the normal hand for most average bricks, okay? This, you know, a rock might cause a ding, okay? All right? I'm not excusing throwing rocks because that's still stupid, but yes. a rock might cause a ding, might crack a window, okay? A brick is going to go through something, Yeah. okay? If it's got any sort of velocity, it's going to go through a window, it's going to go through the hood if dropped from a height, provided it's not a, a very bad brick and it just powders. But the point is, is it, it's going to cause a significant amount of damage, okay? so. You know, rock, giant boulders off the side of, you know, overpasses, bricks off the side of overpasses. This is just something that's just stupid. People, you know, there's a difference between throwing a pebble at a passing truck and throwing a brick, okay? It's, it's, a, it's an incredible level, level of, um, of idiocy, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not saying, like, what, I was what I'm, like, pointing out to trade is that when he's like, what happened to the good old days? I'm like, people have been, kids have been doing this forever. Yeah. I know, but they've never been so, they've never had such fucking bold brass. At least not to my knowledge. Then again, I'm a very antisocial kid, so, well, I'm a very antisocial kid. Yes, I'm still a kid. I'm 10 I, years I old. Hi, everybody. The, I want to say the overpass thing started in the 80s. Yeah, I can buy that. Because that was what you yeah, that was because that was when you started getting foot traffic on on overpasses, okay? Because overpasses were not really that big of a thing before that time, unless you were near a highway, okay? And yeah, they did exist, all right. And yeah, there was still foot traffic on them, but there weren't kids, you know, grabbing shit and throwing them off them. I don't know where the idea started, but I'm pretty sure, given my experiences, that. I saw it start in the 80s. Kids are dumb. Kids get bored easily. They want to do things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the 80s left a lot of bored kids. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. The 80s left lots of bored kids. I say this having been born in the 80s. Early 90s was also boring, but at least by then we had video game consoles and TVs that our parents sat us in front of. These kids did not. Well, we had TVs. Well, just so not a lot of crap that you want to watch on TV. 
So unless you were a geek and Doctor Who, it like yeah, Doctor Who reruns. Yeah, because they had just taken the show off the air because they were dicks. Ah, still bored. Just ah. Anyway, moving on. Moving Moving on. on, It doesn't get any better. This uh, penultimate article. This just puts one last Florida man tonight, everybody. And this one... God, it's just been Florida man this entire theme. Yeah. Florida man, Florida man. Winning 2021, Florida man. Yeah. (laughs) This guy... This this fucking guy goes in the category of asshole. And I say asshole in bold letters. Fake teen doctor arrested for fraud again in Palm Beach County. I want to emphasize that. Fake what doctor? Teen doctor. This is a teenage doctor. Fake teenage doctor. Sorry. Again! Yes. This, this, This means they have done this multiple times. Yes, so everybody, let's say hello to Dr. Love. Yes, that's actually the name he went by. This is the case that That, may... It's a case... This this kid has has snuck and watched a fucking... Has has snuck and watched behind his parents' back. Oh, no, no, no. Earth girls are easy. No, 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 no. That's what one of the dudes calls himself. No, no, no. This is a little bit... Uh, more twisted than that because for one thing uh dr love his actual name is malachi love robinson so technically dr love please tell me he's not a minor please tell me he's not a minor no no he's 23 years old now although now apparently well Love Robinson was arrested for fraud and grand theft on uh, Thursday, the week of January 1st, 2021. He was up to his old tricks again. Hmm? What was that? So, just a few days ago. Yeah, just a few days ago. Uh, He was released uh, that night. Police said Love Robinson worked for a shipping broker, and he's accused of uh, having clients send money to his personal account instead of the company. So yeah, he basically stole a shit ton of money by diverting it away from the company he worked for. Authorities say... Yeah. Authorities say Love Robinson took over $10,000 that belonged to the company. According to police in text messages to the owner of the company, Love Robinson wrote he, quote, fucked himself... Quote, can't say how truly sorry he is, end quote, is, quote, doing everything he can to make it right, end quote, and, quote, I don't want to go to jail. In 2018, Love Robinson pleaded guilty to several fraud charges, grand theft, and practicing medicine without a license. His patients say he... What kind of medicine was he practicing? Let me get there. His patients say he claimed he held several degrees, including a PhD and an MD. What his patients didn't realize was that he was just 18 years old at the time. Love Robinson was charged with stealing more than $20,000 from an elderly Palm Beach County patient he was allegedly treating in 2015. He was later charged and arrested on grand theft charges in February 2016. Uh, Love Robinson insisted he never posed as a medical doctor, but was a, quote, uh, naturopathic physician. Naturopath. Thank you. Basically, it's not medicine, it's good vibes. Oh, God. That's even worse than homeopathic. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me get an actual definition so I don't sound like I'm shooting this out of my ass. Give me a minute. <clears throat> Naturopathy. It is a form of alternative medicine that apl- employs an array of pseudoscientific practices branded as, quote, natural, non-invasive, or promoting self-healing. The ideology and methods of neuropathy, uh, naturopathy, sorry, are based on vitalism and folk medicine rather than evidence-based medicine. So they make shit up. 
Okay. Big. Yeah, so that's what Dr. Love was up to. Basically, not only did he uh, steal money from a company he was working for, he was also stealing from elderly people who actually thought that he was an actual doctor. <laughs> Asshole. Asshole. Yep. Uh, asshole. 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 Just. Mm. And the fact that he was a one. fucking teenager. Sorry, Fanny. Go on. Yeah. One. It is much illegal to impersonate a doctor. Much, much illegal to him. Uh, and much illegal to embezzle fucking money. Just goes to throw the title of, uh, like it's it's twenty it's twenty twenty one, it's the it's the fucking new millennium. This ain't Victor. This ain't like the Victorian era or even the Romantic era or even the time of the founding fathers when back then you could literally just read a book or two and throw the name and throw the title of doctor in front of your name and you would be one. Because nobody knew fucking better. Mm hmm Like, for real. You can't be a doctor unless you spend at least the majority of your life in medical school. And even <sighs> then, it's still a dick move, whether you are a real doctor or not, to take people's money and trick them. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make you a doctor. That doesn't do anything except make you a Giant asshole. Asshole. This also goes to it goes to if you're a doctor with a TARDIS, okay? <laughs> if you're stealing people's money, you're not a doctor. So Hey, hey, hey. The doctor with the TARDIS is a doctor. They're a doctor of cheese making. That's still a PhD. One final note. Malachi here, Doctor Love was released from prison after serving nearly 21 months at a maximum security lockup outside Fort Myers. He went to this max security for... for fraud? He did it multiple times. But still, it's, it's a yeah. white-collar crime. Most people just get, like, a slap on the wrist or they just go to regular jail. He pissed Not somebody max off. security. He did it he once pissed, in... He pissed, off or he, pissed, he pissed somebody off. He did it That's once in 2016, he did it once in 2018, and then he did it another time in, I assume, 2020. He Every two years, he keeps doing this shit. Oh, man. So every two years, he's a moron? Yeah. Every, so much. Every two years, the planets align, and Dr. Love just goes on a fucking money, money embezzling bender. <laughs> It just reminds me of that old of that older web movie. Comic here. <laughs> it, it reminds me of that old. It reminds me of that old uh, web com uh, web comic that old movie uh, Super Bad. Oh, Where'd you get a fake idea? What the hell, McLovin? There's not even a last name. It's just McLovin. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Speaking of surprises, I have our last article for the night. And uh, this is something, this is something special. This is something special. I want the three of you to watch a uh, YouTube video real quick. So uh, everyone in the audience will cut right here because one, I don't, uh, broadcasting audio from a YouTube video doesn't work on radio. And two, I don't want to get in trouble with the creators and YouTube. So we'll be right back with my co-host reacting to what I'm about to show them. Where is, is that a is that like a weird weird like <laughs> weird like Soviet version of a Where's Waldo porn done in stop motion claymation? Like, like Miss Mr. Mr. Pee Pee <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen Ladies and gentlemen I, Ladies and gentlemen both in the uh Ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in both the co-host docket and in the audience, this is John Dillermond, or Dillermond, a Danish kids show which uh, has um, 
some people raising their eyebrows. And uh, the reason why my co-hosts here are um, a little bit mm, speechless right now is because the show features the titular John Dieleman, whose name translates to John Peepee, who has the world's longest penis. And it's prehensile. Yeah, it's prehensile. Prehensile. Meaning that it acts those as a you, fucking you, a sentient tentacle or some shit. You, those of you that have watched Babylon 5 know what we're talking about. Um, <sighs> Londo, Londo would be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so, from Copenhagen, Denmark... The Everyday Adventures of New Danish Kids TV character John Dieleman, like walking the dog or going to the zoo, might not look like the stuff of scandal if the tales didn't often revolve around his oversized penis. <laughs> now, keep in mind, this is one of the world's most so progressive... The whole thing is claymation, or if there is, like, a lot... If that's just the intro and the rest is live action... And this guy, and there's this actual, like, nasty-looking Danish man with a giant mustache wearing that one-piece Where's Waldo swimsuit, and <laughs> he just does things with this super long dick. No, oh, thankfully I wonder, not. All I can wonder, well, all I can wonder, well, why can you... Question. Why, I mean, how does he get these, oh, these this onesie to also have a, a retractable <laughs> compartment for his, his wiener? <laughs> going on? Where does the rest of that fabric go when he's not using his his fucking superpower? He has a hammer space for his dick. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, no. Is he no, actually it, a, a, po- a, a fucking pocket dimension? Is it a bag of holding? <laughs> no, no. You know, it, it, it's the same material. It's the same material that Reed Richards, uh, Reed Richards super suit is made of. <laughs> Well, they do well, call him Mr. Fantastic. Sherlock, you I were got, saying? I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta say this. I just have to say this before we get too far into all this other stuff. Um, the Danes are fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> if you thought Japanese animation was weird, Danes are so out there. No, no, it's not It's not even just their animation. I'm talking about, like, the Danish people also are the ones, one of the one of the uh, last remaining countries that have this celebration of Kris Kringle and his uh, helper friends who is cold pitch black, and they do blackface every Christmas oh, yeah. of this character. No and problem. everyone's yeah, like, really. guys, that's a little offensive. Like, we don't care! We are Danish! So let's actually read you the know, article what here. Read the, the article, Trey, please. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so even in one of the world's most progressive countries, the story of the man with the world's longest willy have sparked debate about just what is appropriate for children in the program's target audience of four to eight years old. We th- we think it's important to be able to tell stories about bodies. So say the public broadcaster DR on their Facebook page. Okay, body positivity is an important thing to teach children these days. Because I have seen... I have seen very bad things happen to kids whose parents have been told, your kid's too fat, and then the parent decides to starve their kid. That's that's not good. No. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, body body positivity is important to teach kids so that, that we can reduce bullying and kids developing eating disorders at a very at, at a young age or at all. But yeah, teaching but them about thing. a man with the longest prehensile dick in the series, we Nala is upset. In the series, we recognize young children's growing curiosity about their bodies and genitals, as well as embarrassment and pleasure in the body. <laughs> All I can see this as is a robot chicken animation. I'm sorry. All I can see this as a robot chicken animation. Okay? Robot Chicken went too far with this one, and now it's in Danish, and, and we have this now. <laughs> 
<laughs> to, be, to be fair, to be fair, I say this as having once been a pre-K teacher. Little kids around that age do get curious. I have, I, I far too often had to sit down with, uh, with my lead and a, and a couple of parents and have to explain to them, you know, in a jokey and trying to play it off in a light-hearted manner. Ha ha, little Susie. And little Billy decided they wanted to take a peek at each other. We told them it wasn't right. Hmm. But just remind them at home when you can. Now let's talk about their ABCs. Yeah, kids are going to be curious. They're going to be curious down there about stuff going on down there. And they're going to notice when somebody else's equipment doesn't match theirs. But still, there's time and a place. I don't want my kids. This is a hell of a, this is a hell of a this not a hell of, match. This, yeah, this is a hell of a. <laughs> this is a, a hell of a way to try and keep, teach kids about that. So uh, John's extra long member is often key to the wacky situations he finds himself in. At one point, floating over the city thanks to balloons tied to his tackle. It. it <laughs> It's a very Danish show. We have a tradition to push the limits and use humor, and we think it's totally normal. Education expert Sophie Munster told the local news. The last name is Munster? It's painful! Uh, so, uh, of course, the far right. You know what happens? Do you want to know what happens? Do you want to know what happens when you tie a string around a long, t a long appendage? I'd rather like not. Your finger, for instance. If you tie a string around your finger and leave it on there too long, eventually your finger's going to fall asleep. You're going to cut off circulation. If you keep tie it too tight, it's going to eventually kill all the tissue over there and make it fall off. Mm. I don't want to think about somebody doing that to their weenie. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but the but the but the but the unease in that statement. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I love that the the, the argument that uh, Sophie Munster has regarding the arguments of the the far right um, MP. I'm not sure what that stands for. MP Morton. Master Schmidt. No, no. Um, uh, MP uh, is a prime is a. Minister, member, uh, of parliament, member of parliament. Member of parliament. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so their argument is the size of the penis is exaggerated so much children realize it's a joke. <laughs> I mean, look, kids kids are a lot smarter than than people give them credit for, so I kind of figure I, he, she probably has a point. I'm still not, you know, totally chill with this. It's weird. It is. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. She does have a point, but it's still, this is just not okay. You, you, you know <laughs> the. You know the sad part is. You know the sad part is. Uh, the intro that, that I just showed you guys. That is a catchy ass beat. <laughs> it's an earworm. Yeah. It's stuck in my head. Don't say worm. Oh God! <laughs> it is catchy. Yes. Ish. You can. I will never look at candy. I will never look at candy canes the same way again. Oh. <laughs> I will warn y'all. You can find it on YouTube. It's not subbed, so it is. It it's in Danish, and it's not subbed unless someone did a closed so captioning on it. Speak Danish. Congrats if you speak Danish and uh, tread lightly. <laughs> you get to see the the adventures of John P. P. All right, and you know what? You know what? No, I find absolutely it's fucking it's hilarious about this. It's going to get censored, by, uh, taken down by YouTube because of the book of the stuff. We'll see. Nope, nope, nope. You know what I find absolutely hilarious about this, and I have, and I can prove that YouTube's going to fuck this up. This is still going to be listed as children's television, so it can't be monetized. You can't comment on it. How do I right, know this? If it end up on YouTube, YouTube. If it ends up on an, on an yeah. official how, channel, how do I how do I know this? Because somebody, because a few people have re-uploaded one of my favorite um, MLP fandom songs of all time, "Winter's Fucked Up," and yep. almost every single one that's been uploaded 
has YouTube claims that it is for kids. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's not very, for kids. Very not. It's very, very not. No. I'm sorry, YouTube algorithm and YouTube employees, if the fact that, you know, colorful ponies are involved confuses you so much, but you do have to actually listen to the lyrics because they're cursing! Likewise. I'm sorry, but it, I'm sorry, but if you get the one video, it is quite obvious that this is not a kid's video. Okay? Yeah. Also, um, likewise, if they don't allow this... Technically, yes. Uh, technically, and uh, apparently, in, De in 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 Denmark, this is children's programming. But if they let this slide by. <laughs> no, we, well, then. Here's the thing: this is going to end up on YouTube Kids, and it's one of the biggest problems that YouTube has had with YouTube Kids. Okay, it is so easy to put videos on there that are not quite right. <clears throat> And it still ends up on the YouTube Kids app and available to kids. And, you know, they've never, ever found a good solution other than super, super attacking it. And, I mean, you know, heck, this is how... attacking, attaching a lot of people to the problem. I mean, heck, this is how, how, this is how Five Minute Crafts manages to get past, uh, get put on uh, YouTube Kids and get past the censors and, te and telling kids that hey you can you you can bleach strawberries and get white strawberries and eat them yeah oh. no. no you can't bleach is deadly no mm -hmm. jesus yep it, uh there is another way you can get white strawberries and it is totally this is edible getting in the just, weeds, though. just leave them in alcohol yeah, for a week but yeah slightly in also the not let's get out of here late. Also not kid friendly, but you know. <laughs> Again, Anywho. so much. Yeah, this is how you get. This is how you get. Not. Uh, this is how you get lawsuits going. Is what what it is. And speaking of lawsuits, or rather, and speaking of lawsuits, I'm about to file one if I don't get off this train. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is that is the end of uh, this episode. What a what a way to start off the new year and the new version of this show, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's a Danish version of Where's Dongo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, just a little bit of uh, housekeeping here, folks. Since this is a new iteration of Trademarks Trainwreck, we got some new stuff to add for you, uh, to uh, put out there for you. I've got a uh, an official Twitter for Trademarks Trainwreck, just to keep you all in the loop of any updates and anything like that you can find it is this this show wasn't a dumpster fire and toxic enough you have to throw twitter in on it Ugh. yes i embrace you can it tweet us if you find any crazy articles that you think we, we would be appropriate remember nothing involving fatalities please yes please do or politics unless it's just funny and the person just happens to be a politician yes mm. you can find it at tm underscore train wreck again at TM underscore train wreck. Uh, that is all lowercase, and you can find that on Twitter. Also, uh, I don't have a Patreon just yet. Maybe I'll make one, but in the meantime, I've got a coffee. So if you're feeling generous and want to make a one time donation. So you have, you have, you know, we know coffee is your favorite drink, but do you have a way for people to bit, give you money? Yes. <laughs> I'm talking about coffee, K O dash F I. Oh, a coffee. Yes, coffee. Coffee. I call it coffee because it's easier to say. Coffee. So, coffee slash trademarks train wreck, all one word, all lowercase. Coffee, K O dash F I dot com slash trademarks train wreck, all one word, lowercase. If you're feeling generous and want to give a one time donation of at least $3, that would be. Very generous of you, and I would be very grateful. Thank you very much. Also, brain, brain, brain bleach we, is expensive, so you know he needs if, he needs the money. Yes. And if you uh, and if you and if enough people uh be, join up, not only will he also open up a Patreon, but you could also potentially fund him and get him out of his day job permanently. <laughs> yes, a man can dream. Uh, two final things before I plug in uh, whatever social media my co-hosts have. 
Uh, our banner art that you have been seeing for a good chunk of this show, and that appears everywhere in uh, on all uh, social media connected with the uh, train wreck. That banner art was made by Court Awesome, a lovely artist who uh, is with the Celestia Radio crew. You can find her at Twitter at Court Awesome, C O R T A W S O M E, at Court Awesome. Also, our theme song, our new theme song that we've been uh, that we're going to use as of this episode, because I can no longer use Ozzy Osbourne's "Crazy Train" that uh, now that I'm on YouTube, that was made by Maravex, who you can find on SoundCloud, and you can also find him here on uh, YouTube. He does a little uh, My Little Pony uh, fan series called uh, Doctor Who's the Great and Powerful. I believe that's it. Where he uh, voices... Or I think it's just Doctor Who's the Great. The great. Yes, Doctor Who's the Great. He voices the uh, titular Doctor, and also uh, creates the music for that series as well. You can find him on SoundCloud, uh, Maravex. M-A-R-A-V-E-X. And that's about it for plugging all of the shit that I have to. So, uh, all of you, one at a time, how about you give your social media... Your DMs, all that stuff. Greymane, you first. I am, uh, when I am streaming, I'm currently on hiatus at the moment. I am streaming on Twitch TV slash random Greymane. Uh, you will see me play all sorts of weird stuff. And eventually, I'm going to start constructing my uh, my streaming set. I figured out a cheap way to do, among, thi- among other things, bubble tubes. So uh, I'm going to work on that. And sewing, once I get the sewing machine unburied from the garage because it is buried in the garage um on twitter i am uh, horrendously retweeting everybody's stuff as dead coffee d-e-a-d-c-0-f-f-e-e uh and you can find me on there um and i am random green on filmfiction.net and uh uh ao3 um uh, archive arm <laughs> yes um uh, our archive How do you spell online, that? You know, fan of fan of stuff. You know what it. You know where it is. <laughs> um, so I always eventually be putting all my my stuff up there. Right now I'm in transition, and uh, you know, um, my wife is dealing with cancer, and we're dealing with a lot of stuff. So if you go to my Twitch, there is a donation link. Uh, I'm, you know, if you've got something to spare, send it my way. I could really use the help. But, yes, all proceeds would be on. appreciated. Uh, Sherlock, anything uh, you want to plug in? Uh, no. I'm good for now. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Shirley, uh, Shirley is one of the uh, co-hosts that can be found every now and then on uh, Tree Time on CelestiRadio.com, which is a show that uh, is aired live every Saturday at currently 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but when Daylight Savings hit, it's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And finally, the fangirl. Hey, I have a few to link. Uh, yes, I am also on the YouTubes. Uh, just look up just the fangirl. Yes, look up just the fangirl on here. You will find my YouTube channel. Uh, I have posted random garbage, including uh, occasionally the re- odd fan uh, 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 based uh, plan with me because I'm dipping my toe into the bullet journal planner community. Um, on that note, if you like how I set up my notebook when you look on my YouTube channel, I am very willing, if you pay me the money to buy said notebook you want, I'm very willing to, uh, set one up for you, uh, and mail it to you. Um, just get in touch with me by messaging me, Al, on Tumblr, because you can find me on the Tumblr still. Yes, people still use that. Uh... Just look for me on Tumblr as Miss Anime Girl, or uh, or as just the Fan Girl on Tumblr. You can email me. I will link. We will have all those things linked in there. Um, you can find me on the as the Fan Girl on pa- Patreon. That's patreoncom slash the Fan Girl. Um, I admit, since getting a job, posting art is not. A humongous priority. If you give me enough money, I will make it a bigger priority. Likewise, Redbubble, just the fan girl. Just look for me in Redbubble. Bubble. Just do a search for just the fan girl. 
Um, I do write fan fiction as well. If you want to read my fan fiction, I recommend that I recommend I have uh, quite a few on my page. Though, please be warned, I have several stories on there that are 18 plus, so 18 plus people, welcome to read everything. If you are not 18 plus, please heed the warnings. I have them there for a reason. Heed the warnings. Heed the rating warning. Please. For everybody. Hey, just for a reason, people. Hate just it. for a reason. But if you want to read my stuff, you can look for me in Archive of Our Own under Blue Rain 1984. And if you want to tweet at me, again, I prefer if you be over uh, be over the age of 18, you can look for me as at Miss Fanime Girl. That's F-A-N-I-M-E-G-I-R-L. Miss Fanime Girl on Twitter. I will be very easy to spot. I usually use the same cartoony icon that I drew on pretty much everything. So yeah. Look for me on all these places. I'm very much open to saying hi, to answering questions. Unless you're a troll. If you're a troll, I play D and D. I know exactly how to handle a troll. <laughs> I give out the mace. All right. And the all right. Well, shall we go? Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, listening and or watching this episode of Trademarks Trainwreck. We are, once again, a show that is featured on Celesti Radio, all of Phantom all the time. All of the uh, links regarding uh, our social media accounts and our uh, the articles that we have uh, talked about tonight will be in the description. So, with that, my name is Trademark, and good night. <laughs>